have already studied about earthquake and types of waves generated by an earthquake. But how do we measure earthquake? So today we will see how to measure earthquake. Look at this picture. This is the picture of a device that helps us to measure earthquake. And the name of this device is seismograph. So what is a seismograph? Seismograph is a scientific device or an instrument that records earthquake. This device has a heavy base and it is placed on the ground. Now a heavy weight or bob is attached to this device with the help of a string. Also a pen is attached with the bob and the pen registers the vibrations on a sheet of rotating drum and the vibrations or the recordings that are registered during an earthquake on a sheet of paper is called a seismogram. Now let's see how this device works. This video displays how a seismograph works. The device is placed on the ground and a heavy weight or bob is attached. So when the ground shakes, the bob also moves and the pen attached with the bob marks or registers the markings on a sheet of rotating drum. See initially when there is no earthquake and the ground does not shake, a straight line is created on the paper. But when there are mild shakings, small lines are created and when the ground shakes heavily or violently, long and irregular lines are created on the paper. Now this device is installed at seismic stations and it records the seismic activities that occur daily. But there is a drawback of this device. The drawback of this device is that it can only measure the magnitude of an earthquake but cannot predict the date and time of occurrence of an earthquake. So now you know what is a seismograph and how does it work. So now let's make a model of a seismograph. For this you need a wooden clamp or a cardboard box. Also take a heavy weight like a ball kind of a thing and pencil or pen. Attach the pencil or pen with the wooden clamp with the help of a tape. Also take a sheet of tissue paper and attach it with this device. So now your device is ready for use. Now shake the ground. What will happen? The device will also shake simultaneously and the pen or the pencil will do the markings on this roll of tissue paper. So this is how a seismograph works and this device is used to measure the seismic activities caused during an earthquake. So we just learned that seismograph and seismogram are used to measure earthquake but both are not the same thing. What is a seismograph? A seismograph is an instrument or a device that is used to record the motions of ground during an earthquake. Whereas what is a seismogram? Seismogram are the recordings of ground vibrations on a graphical sheet. So this is the picture of a seismogram and this is the picture of a seismograph. Seismograph is the device that measures earthquake and seismogram are the recordings on a graphical sheet of paper. Now the horizontal axis of a seismogram measures time in seconds and the vertical axis of a seismogram measures the ground displacement in millimeters. Now before we move on, can you help me to answer this? Name the instrument that is used to record earthquake. Is it a seismograph, seismogram, seismology or thermometer? Well, the correct answer is seismograph. We learned that seismograph is the device that records ground vibrations during an earthquake. But how do we get to know about the magnitude and intensity of an earthquake? Well, there are two scales for this purpose and they are Richter scale and Mercury scale. 
So now let us know about these scales. Richter scale is the scale that measures the magnitude or energy released by an earthquake. Whereas Mercalli scale is the scale that measures intensity or effects caused by an earthquake. So this scale measures the energy released by an earthquake or magnitude and Mercalli scale measures the intensity of an earthquake. Richter scale was developed by Charles Francis Richter and Mercalli scale was developed by Giuseppe Mercalli. So both these scales are named after the inventors who invented them. Richter scale takes the help of seismograph to calculate magnitude of an earthquake. Whereas Mercury scale does not depend on seismograph, rather it makes the measurements based on observations. So Mercury scale does the measurements by observing the effects of an earthquake on human beings, property and on environment. A Richter scale gives numerical values from 0 to 10.0 and mercury scale delivers roman numbers from 1 to 12. Also 8 on mercury scale is equivalent to 6 to 7 on Richter scale. So this is the relationship between Richter scale and Mercury scale. So the prime difference between these two scales of earthquake is that Richter scale measures magnitude of an earthquake and Mercury scale measures the intensity of an earthquake. So we learned that Richter scale measures magnitude of an earthquake and Mercalli scale measures the intensity of an earthquake. Now what is the difference between magnitude and intensity? Well for this we can consider the case of a living room. See in this living room there are two lamps, a floor lamp and a table lamp. The floor lamp is of 600 watt and the table lamp is of say 20 watt. Now both these lamps are illuminating the objects just around them. That is the table lamp is illuminating the table on which it is placed and the floor lamp is illuminating the ceiling just above it. But see the objects that are placed far away from both these lamps such as this television set and the basket. These two objects are hardly visible. Why so? Because the intensity of light that falls on these objects decreases with increase in their distance from the source of light. So we can see that the power of the lamp does not change but the intensity of light changes and therefore the objects in the room are illuminated differently. Now the power of the lamp is equivalent to the magnitude of an earthquake. So what is the magnitude of an earthquake? The magnitude of an earthquake is the measure of energy released by an earthquake. And what is the intensity of an earthquake? The intensity of an earthquake is the degree of hazards or effects caused by an earthquake and the intensity of an earthquake is equivalent to the intensity of the light that was illuminating the objects in the room. Also just as the power of the lamp remains unchanged the magnitude of an earthquake does not change with increase in distance from the epicenter of the earthquake but the intensity of the earthquake changes or rather decreases with 
increase in distance from the epicenter of the earthquake. This map is a rough representation of the earthquake that occurred in Kathmandu on 2015. The epicenter of the earthquake was a few kilometers away from Kathmandu and the magnitude of the earthquake registered at epicenter was 7.8. Now, these different shades on the map represents the degree of intensity or perceived shaking experienced at these different places. See, this color, the dark orange color, experienced severe shaking, that is severe intensity. This color experienced very strong intensity but a little less from the severe shaking. The yellow color experienced strong shaking and green color experienced mild or moderate shaking. So we can see that as the distance increases from the epicenter the intensity decreases. The places that are situated at the epicenter or very near to it experienced severe shaking while the places that were situated far away from the epicenter experienced mild shaking. But the magnitude that was registered at the epicenter remained unchanged. So from this we can understand that magnitude is the energy released by an earthquake which usually remains unchanged and the intensity is the degree of hazards caused by an earthquake which decreases with increase in distance from the epicenter of the earthquake. We know Richter scale measures the magnitude of an earthquake and the numerical values on Richter scale ranges from 0 to 10. An earthquake of magnitude 0 is not an earthquake at all because the tremors or shakings are hardly felt. Again, an earthquake of magnitude 10 has not been recorded in history yet. Now as the magnitude of earthquake rises from zero, the effects caused by an earthquake also increases. In Richter scale, an earthquake of magnitude 1 to 3 is least effective because the people feel weak tremors, especially the ones on the upper floors may get frightened. However, the earthquake does not cause any significant damage to life or property. The people just get frightened. Again, an earthquake of magnitude 4 to 5 is effective and they cause mild tremors. The people run out of their houses in a state of panic. There are also small cases of building damage like the plasters may come off and there may be cracks in the buildings. So the earthquake of magnitude 4 to 5 causes minor damage to property. An earthquake of magnitude 6 to 7 causes strong tremors and are quite effective. The people find it difficult to walk without holding on to something. Also, weak building collapses completely and well-built buildings may experience severe damage. So, an earthquake of magnitude 6 to 7 causes significant damage to life and property. Lastly, an earthquake of magnitude 8 to 9 is very severe and fatal. It causes severe tremors. The people are harmed and they may also be trampled under the buildings. Buildings collapses completely also cracks may develop on the roads. Therefore, an earthquake of magnitude 9 to 7 is very intense and causes catastrophic damage to life and property. As I have already mentioned earlier, an earthquake of magnitude more than 9, that is 10, has not been registered on history yet. So, from this chart, we can see that 
as the magnitude of earthquake rises, the effects caused by an earthquake also increases and an earthquake of magnitude 8 and 9 are quite severe. Let's have a hypothetical example of an earthquake. Suppose the earthquake occurred on 3rd April 2020 and the earthquake has hit these places. An earthquake of magnitude 6.5 occurred in Lucknow at 10.33 am. The earthquake of same magnitude was felt in the city of Kathmandu at 10.30 am. Again, an earthquake of same magnitude was felt in Patna at 10.34 am. Whereas, an earthquake of 5.6 magnitude occurred in New Delhi at 10.30 am. Again, Finally, an earthquake of 4.3 magnitude occurred in Jaipur at 10.30 am. So, in this map, we can see that there are few places that have experienced same magnitude of earthquake like Lucknow, Kathmandu and Patna, although their timing differs. Again, there are few places that experienced earthquake at the same time but of varying magnitudes. So if we join these places experiencing same magnitude of an earthquake with the help of a line then do you know what this line is called? This imaginary line is called an isoseismal line. So what is an isoseismal line? An isoseismal line is an imaginary line connecting all points on a map that have equal magnitude of an earthquake. So this line on the map is an isoseismal line that connects all the points that experience same magnitude of an earthquake or an earthquake of 6.5 magnitude. See? The magnitude of earthquake at all these places is 6.5. Now, as I have mentioned earlier, New Delhi, Jaipur and Kathmandu are the places that have experienced earthquake at the same time, that is at 10.30 am. So, if you join these places with the help of an imaginary line, then this line has a special name. This line is called homoseismal line. So what is a homoseismal line? A homoseismal line is an imaginary line connecting all points on a map where earthquake occurred at the same time. So this is a homoseismal line which connects all the points on the map that experience earthquake at 10.30 am. See, all these three places experienced earthquake at the same time, that is at 10.30 am. So, in today's video, we learned how to measure earthquake. We learned that the device that measures earthquake is called seismograph, whereas the recordings that are registered during an earthquake is called a seismogram. We also learned about different scales that are used to measure earthquake. Rector scale measures the magnitude of an earthquake and Merkley scale measures the intensity of an earthquake. Then with the help of a chart we saw varying magnitudes and their corresponding effects. We also learnt about the difference between magnitude and intensity and finally we read about two imaginary lines, isosismal line and homoseismal line. In our next video, we will learn about the causes, effects and measures that should be taken during an earthquake. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests.
get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now